Hello and welcome to another, maybe, modular in a week. I know in the last episode I said I was going to do two dual PWM in then this next video, uh, because I did this, the R2R DAC. Um, but I couldn't let this go. Uh, I really figured I should do some project with this. Uh, I've had a lot on in on me. Not a lot, but a few in mind. And one thing that I just couldn't let go was to make an Arduino based sample and hold uh, that would get away with or get rid of some of the nuances of, of, uh, of the usual uh, LM398 uh, uh, with the special capacitor and all that. Um, in this case, we can just sample uh, either either a random number which we can do inside the the Arduino between 0 and 1023 or uh, input any signal and we can sample that using the analog read function and then output a 10-bit value so a, thousand, a value between 0 and 1023 uh, which is quite high resolution between 0 and 5 volts higher than one volt per octave so should be we could be made musical not very precise but yeah could be made musical um so we're going to do that i've already gone way ahead got all these different functions which i already bought a piece or ordered a pcb which hasn't arrived yet um but we'll look at that also. Uh, that so I just I I haven't written the program yet. We're gonna write the program uh, and just hope that that works with the PCB I've ordered. We'll see. Um, so that's what we're gonna do before uh, after I've said thank you to my patrons who uh, by supporting me over on Patreon get to see a little bit behind the scenes of what happens in here when the when the when the camera for youtube is off um most recently they saw a couple of components i got and what i have in mind for those components and what different projects might come to fruition from that you i need to get it out of my head and into the real world that is also always a problem uh, we'll see how we do today with this sample and hold, for example. So uh, thank you very much, everyone who's over there. Uh, you are awesome and making this a little bit more easy for me to do. Uh, so with that, let's go into the computer and look at a bit of what I had in mind. Today I'd like to show this design pr process like this. Because this is usually how I do. I come up with an idea and I take a small piece of paper like this and I just start jotting down uh, stuff that I want to have, ideas, stuff like that, and then I usually do a small uh, mock-up what I want to have on the panel. Once I have this and I really want to make sure that I actually can get everything on the panel, I go into ECEDA and I actually make a mock-up panel. This is this is the final panel, but this is what I do, and I just write out here on the side all the stuff that I'd like to have uh, on the panel, of, and therefore in the module. So with this I can show you what I have in mind. Uh, so there should be a sample input, of course, and there should be a clip diode, because this will be a 0 to 5 volt input signal. And uh, once we're, if, if it's too much clipping, it will um, just be a bunch of the same notes because it will be five volts all the, all the time up there. So I'd like to have a small dial so I can dial down the signal so it doesn't get distorted. I want to have a flip switch for the track or sample and hold. Uh, so, this is my take on track and hold. I saw this image on 
uh, on a site where they discussed this where they said sample and hold is you wait for the if you have a sinus wave let's just draw this so there here we have a sinus wave so in sample and hold the the dotted line here is where you just don't do anything you just listen to the signal and wait for the trig to come and when the trig comes you hold whatever signal you have there until the signal drops or until the trig drops and then you go back to listening and then you find it here again you get the new trigger and you listen there on that side they said these were the same but they showed on the image if we continue this wave a bit like that so track and hold they showed that this was when you were tracking and then you held it and then you went up again and you came over here and you tra uh, held it and then down like that so I like this I interpreted this as you actually let the signal through and you just hold the signal once you get there and then you release it and you get the signal again release it and like that so that is my take on it the track and hold you actually let the whatever signal you have you just let it through and out here and using so I'm going to build a an internal noise random generator uh, so putting it in track and hold it will just be a noise output uh, being a digital noise but through a DAC the, D, uh, the DAC uh, so it actually becomes analog and we'll see how that sounds that will be an interesting sound I think so that's anyway that switch I want then I want a max and a min value uh, basically a high cut and a low cut filter but again we are in the digital domain so we're not talking about frequencies we're talking about numbers so by raising the minimal value the from 0 to 1023 say will be 300 2023 so we won't play the first 300 numbers and that way basically we are cutting away bits uh, at both ends and that will we can decide if we want to, ha to have very very many low notes or very many high notes by these two knobs I think again I think a lot here I'm not sure then we have the hold input and an LED for that so we know there's a hold and there's the output and the name is Sith or S and then this is a pipe sign which is in logic terms or T so sample or T and a small and H hold but if we disregard the small and sign there it is and we say that's an I instead of a pipe then it's Sith yeah. so that's what we're gonna do uh, this is the circuit from last video so once I've done that I go and do the circuit I already know there is a lot of mistakes here and I've already ordered this so this is coming and I'm going to do the program we're going to do some testing and then we'll see how much of it works once the module gets here I've made this really short sketch to show uh, some things just some trigger input and LEDs we're not going to use that in this one we have an integer for the sample and one for the high cut and one for the low cut um, for now we're just gonna we're gonna start by testing the random uh, noise just to listen to how this how random noise made with an Arduino and a bunch of resistors can sound uh, so basically we set up just the same we set up 
the two ports for outputs everything we start the random seed i don't i'm unsure if this one is really needed it is said that if you do this it's more random but again i'm just doing it from a random number of 1023 so guessing it's not that random but anyway the sample is then just a random number and this is where the low cut and high cut comes in so we just set the random number between these two numbers uh, in this case 0 and 1023 so we use the whole range of of uh, numbers and then when we add two pots to do this we can add the high and low notes thing so uh, then we just output these port the low byte and high byte and if sample is equal to or greater than 1023 that means it is a it's clipping and we uh, digital write pin 13 so let's upload this to the Arduino and try this out so I've connected this here and just a output from directly from the um, DAC there is a one microfarad capacitor and this is the sound uh, I'm guessing this is a low pass filter so yeah so if we just take it raw out instead of so this is not again this is not digital noise this is real white noise it's just made in a digital way but because of the DAC it is analog can't so yeah okay it works let's go and add the two low cut and high cut and see what that can do so here I have added two potentiometers connected between 0 volts or ground and 5 volts uh, and added two more lines to the code this did not work as intended when just listening to the sound so here again we have white noise and if we take away bits here it doesn't change the sound it just changes the the volume of the sound also if you re if we do a comparison with this sound yeah, it now sounds much more an digital uh, and that is probably because now we're doing two analog reads which is not as fast so we have slowed down the uh, the noise so it is a bit more digital because it is running at a lower rate than it was before before it was just spitting out uh, data on uh, onto the deck and it was super fast now we've do a lot of analog read which is slow and that's why it's not as bright and as white noisy as before but when well, if we do like this if we take this out of here and instead uh, no not <laughs> if we take it out of here and add a oscillator in between and we take the CV input here to the output to the CV input there instead so now we just get noise through the uh, oscillator which just creates a different kind of noise but now you can hear what these will do once we're in the sample and hold phase because if we take the low cut go up gets really high pitched until we actually get a tone when they are both the same and we are also uh, clipping here uh, so and the same if we take the high cut and go down we'll get until we get the lowest note if we take them and put them at the same place we 
can get a tone and we do like this and we get this really trashed sound in between the, these two uh, voltages or yeah which is basically what it is and then we split them apart and we're back to kind of noise Let's take a new look at the code now. We've added a bunch of stuff. I've added an input pull-up to the trigger input. And I check if the trigger input is low. If it is, we turn on the trig LED and then we check the analog read values for the low cut and the high cut, the same as before. We get the sample we send the sample and then we have this little while loop that just stays here because we've sent the value we're not going to send the value until we get a new sample or uh, until we get a new trig input so as long as the trig input is low that means pressed or or, or active uh, then do nothing so we just wait here for the trig to release once it does it starts looping again uh, we have this sample writing the clip for the if we are 1023 and above um, that's also in this loop actually but so that's yeah that's not doing anything right now but uh, and then uh, when once the trig is released we turn off the led so let's go to the modular and see what this sounds like. Back at the modular we've connected this one. We see the trig LED is lighting up over here. Uh, same as from the LFO which it is connected to. Uh, input trig in here and then we have the CV output from the DAC going into voltage per octave on the braids. And if we turn this up We have this typical sample and hold sound. And now these buttons, so what we can do now, if we want only the lower notes, we take the high cut and we... And we only get low notes. Same, if we only want high notes, We go up here, and if we want something in the middle, we can dial that in. So, kind of what we are looking for. Uh, we still need the sample input to work. Uh, I need to check if there's a faster way to read these uh, to do the analog read there is but at, the, at this still uh, staying at 1024 or 10 bit resolution I'm not sure so can check take a look at that and um, I'm going to end this video here this shows that with Quite simple code, uh, not that simple uh, circuits so far. Uh, you can make a decent sample and hold. Um, I'm going to continue work on this code, see if I can get the analog read a bit faster. I'll put the code on my GitHub if you want to follow along or help out. Please come with advice on uh, ways to do this faster better because i'm not a uh, coding whiz as such uh, trying to learn this is partly why i do these videos learning by explaining or something it's a really good way of learning if you ask the teachers of yesteryear um, anyway thanks for watching Hope you like this and uh, that you'll uh, come back for more. Uh, I'll do a part two on this one. So until next time, take care. Bye.